This is Law Call on 13 WMAZ. And welcome back to Law Call. I'm Morgan Dukes. Ask us anything is our topic tonight. We're going to get into it with Carl Reynolds and Kate Kerbo from Reynolds Horn and Savant. They've got some good answers to some good questions. So here's our first email question. And this is such a good question. It says, when someone contacts you about a legal claim, what happens at that very first meeting? Do I need to bring certain documents or just tell my story? Can you tell immediately if I have a solid case? That is such a good question. People often wonder, when I come to meet an attorney, what should I bring with me? Kate, you want to take a stab at this one? Yeah, Morgan, I mean, in the line of work that we do, um, you know, a lot of times I will talk to somebody over the phone first, and you can kind of tell whether or not, you know, there's going to be a case or whether or not they even need an attorney, just kind of at first blush. And, you know, when I determine, yeah, this is something we need to investigate to, to see if, you know, we can handle it for them, then I'll schedule them to come in. Um, and when, when I schedule that meeting, I always ask that they bring um, a copy of their accident report and their declarations page um, that shows what insurance coverage they have. Um, adults, I usually ask if they'll bring their driver's license and that's usually enough to get started. Oh, okay. That, Carl, that would, anything that else? Would be, yeah, that would be on a wreck case. It really depends on yeah. the kind of case that they're calling about. Uh, certainly on, on that, in that situation, whatever information they have, you would want to bring in with them. If it's a, if it's a different kind of a case, it's, uh, it could be anything. It could be uh, a libel, a, a defamation. It could be uh, medical malpractice or a complex product case. Then mm. you just want them to come in and tell their story. It, it, and, and the important thing here, and, and adding to what Kate said, is that when she talks to a client, a prospective client to come in, she makes the appointment, she meets with them. If I make the appointment, I meet with them. They will always sit down and have their first meeting with a lawyer, licensed to practice law in Georgia. Not a paralegal, not a uh, case manager, not, a, uh, not a, uh, an investigator. And that's one of my complaints about the plethora of advertising lawyers. Now we had a case not too long ago, man was on a motorcycle, car turned left in front of him, got hit, actually had to amputate his leg. Wow. Uh, he told his wife to call bleep, bleep, bleep. And I won't say who it was, but it was one of those that uh, makes a big production out of their advertisements. Now get this, you're not going to believe this. Here's a man with an amputated leg, clear liability, and had pretty substantial policy limits. They had uh, an investigator, not even a paralegal, have him, have the wife come down from the ICU in the hospital, meet them on the curbing of the sidewalk, and sign a retain agreement for the investigator in the car. And... Mm. And to my knowledge, they never even saw this client because he died five days later. And they should have been up there taking pictures, dealing with, with uh, the medical people, getting uh, information they could preserve and present later at trial. It, 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 I, don't get me started. Uh, oh and then the hmm. wife hadn't seen him. And they send off a demand letter and get back in return a check for $300,000 which that firm then negotiated and, and put the money in their escrow and then sent out the, the uh, payments to the, to the client without wow. ever having even investigated to see if the defendant who caused the wreck had uh, mm -hmm. an estate of her own or had assets. And it turned out that th there was a $300,000 policy. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, the woman who caused the wreck was very well to do and owned property all over Georgia. So she was good for whatever verdict they would have gotten against it. And wow. the end of the story wow. is it wound up in a legal malpractice case and we handled that part of it. Well, I'm certainly, I'm certainly glad that you mentioned uh, when you come to Reynolds Horn as a man, you will speak to an attorney uh, right from the beginning. And that's so good to know. And, so and, everybody. And the very sad story I just gave mm -hmm. you is, is a product of 
those firms not having lawyers deal with the clients that come in to see them for okay. their services. They're doing okay. a disservice to the bar and they're doing a disservice to the people who come to them for representation. Mm, okay. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> That's all you have to say. 